Now, the next thing, now that we've talked about a lot of the mechanical design information, stuff inside SOLIDWORKS, user interface, sketching, drawing, creating parts, creating flexible components, doing analysis work, we know a key part of the, of the overall process is managing all this data. And there's a lot of things that go involved in that. The first thing that we're going to talk about is a new tool called SOLIDWORKS Cell. So Cell is similar to DriveWorks. DriveWorks is a configurator. DriveWorks actually creates engineering data for you. SOLIDWORKS Cell takes your engineering data and actually configures more, uh, that's a good way to put this, better representations for your end user, for your customer to interact with. Let's take a look at how that actually works. In this case, OMATS took SOLIDWORKS Cell and they actually developed, took all of their models, all their hard-earned engineering data, and they configured it for their website, which is what SOLIDWORKS Cell is doing. It's putting it in an easier form to, for the end user to digest. In this case, OMAX customers are able to go to their website and choose the options that they want on their machines. For example, they can choose the, no the nozzle, the doors. Maybe they want to choose the support or leveling mechanisms. They want to see uh, different, the different display options, whether they want a single LCD screen or maybe they want a whole console on there. And so what SOLIDWORKS Cell is doing is it's taking all that engineering data and configuring it in a format that's easier to, to consume by the end user. On top of that, the end user can even leverage things like augmented reality and see your products in their environment. So it's giving it a better deliverable. Now here's my favorite thing about SOLIDWORKS Cell, is that SOLIDWORKS Cell actually has an online traffic analytics tool. So what does that mean for you? That means it's tracking your customers of the options that they are requesting the most and the configurations that they're requesting the most, which gives you better design data so that way you can start planning what you need to be designing for the future off what your customers are actually asking for. Now, now that we have all that, how do we communicate information amongst each other? One common way to do that is to leverage markups. Now, we added the ability to use markups with a touch-enabled device last year, but we've taken that and put a lot more flexibility in that tool. So here, what you can see is I'm using a stylist, and I'm using my markup tool, and I'm putting all my notes directly onto my 3D model. So in this case, I'm showing my guy, hey, I want you to show the motion for this in my, in my tool. And I'm capturing that in my markups folder. We're now organizing those markups much more efficiently and we're giving you the ability to export those markups out so people who don't have SOLIDWORKS can then leverage those. It's pretty simple. You highlight them, give them a quick double click with the stylus, and then choose export markup. I'm going to export these in a very common format, in a TIFF file format, so that way people that don't have SOLIDWORKS can see the changes that I'm wanting or seeing the information that I wanted to convey to them. This is brand new. You can now use markups directly on a SOLIDWORKS drawing with your touch-enabled device. So now, I might be out on the shop floor and I want to convey some information back to my engineer. So I'm going up on my Microsoft Surface and I'm using my stylus here and I'm putting all the information that I want them to add into this drawing so that way I can see it and, and digest it just a little bit better. So that's brand new for SOLIDWORKS 2020, leveraging markups with my touch-enabled device inside a SOLIDWORKS drawing. Now. The last thing that I want to show you in SOLIDWORKS, and then we're going to go take a look at PDM, is a tool called 3D Interconnect. How many of you guys have ever gotten a model that wasn't a SOLIDWORKS model, right? It's something else. If you didn't know this, a few years back, we added a new tool called 3D Interconnect. For example, a customer sent me a, uh, an Autodesk Inventor. I know it makes me, gives me chills, right? And I want to use it directly inside SOLIDWORKS. The problem with that, previous to having a tool called 3D Interconnect, was when I brought it in, what happened to that model? became a dumb solid. So if they changed it in the other CAD platform, when I brought it back in, I'm essentially starting from square one again. With 3D Interconnect, we keep a live connection. So now you can use any file type directly in SOLIDWORKS without doing any actually true conversion. In this case, I have a step file. You'll notice I can drag that step file directly from Windows Explorer directly into my SOLIDWORKS assembly without actually converting it. And what it does is it puts this little icon. That little icon now keeps my SOLIDWORKS assembly tied to my step file. So if I get a new step file, all I got to do is replace my, new, my old one with the new one, and SOLIDWORKS is going to update. The cool thing about this is now I can leverage all the things that I'm used to using. For example, I'm going to put a profile made in here. So new for SOLIDWORKS 2020 is not 3D interconnect, but we're just making it much simpler where you can even drag any 
file, whether it's SolidWorks or non-SolidWorks file from a Windows Explorer interface directly into SolidWorks. Now, for those of you guys that know me personally, know that I'm pretty heavy in using PDM and using Manage and setting up those systems for customers. The first thing I wanna show you is some of the new PDM enhancements. Now, if you're not familiar with what PDM is, let me just give you a quick, quick rundown. PDM is a vaulting tool. It's a way to control your versions and your revisions and your history and who can access your data. If you are familiar with PDM, I want to show you the fact that PDM is going to be much more efficient to use in SOLIDWORKS 2020 because we've streamlined the connection between the server and the client. We are now loading data, what we call asynchronously. And what that means is, as you see me navigate, I can continue to navigate, and it's actually going to load all of the data in the background, pre not preventing you from continuing your work. Where ordinarily, I would have to wait until the screen finished loading before I could go to the next thing. You'll see that on the right-hand side of my PDM, I can now access all my information, like bills and materials, contains where used, and jump through them without having to wait for each tab to load one at a time. So it's making it much more efficient. On top of that, for those of you in high latency environments, and all that is is a fancy way of saying if you have a slow connection between you and the server, if you're leveraging the add-in, we're actually streamlining that connection too. So if you're working inside SOLIDWORKS, you'll see that it's going to load things in the background and still give you access to your model and let you to continue to work like normal. Now, the next thing that we're going to see in PDM is we're going to see a brand new quick search. And what the quick search is, it's like a Google search. If you go into the top right-hand side of PDM up here at the top, you're going to see that little search menu. That search menu is what we call quick search. It gives you the ability to quick search multiple variables, things like part numbers, description, and it also has a predictive text. So it's actually learning the things that you're searching for more frequently, and it's helping you find those things much faster. On top of that, if you search for something over and over, it's a common search, you can take that quick search and actually save it as a favorite. In this case, I can configure this to only search by, say, project name, file name, maybe folder. I can search all folders or current for folder or maybe all revisions. From there, you can see I saved that as a favorite, and now I can use that moving forward. You can also do what we call a multivariable search. So in this case, what you're seeing is I'm searching by description and number in the same variable field. So now it's giving me access to a greater amount of content from that search mechanism. Now. Controlling drawings can be a little bit of a challenge. In this case, I just kind of want to show you a little visual. Sometimes we're working on parts and drawings, and we might be in a kind of a segregated environment. Multiple people are working on different things at a different time. In this case, one of my users is working on a part, and one of the users is working on detailing the drawing. Inside PDM, the user that was working on detailing the drawing tried to approve the drawing, but the user that was working on the part wasn't done working. We now have a new option called child reference state. What that means is, is if you try and prove a drawing before all the sub-children are actually approved, it would block you from approving the drawing. Very beneficial when you're in that multi-user environment. In this case, once I approve that part, it'll let me push the drawing through. Let's take a look and see how that actually works. So here, I'm going to search for the cast drawing of that um, part that I was working on earlier. So there it is, and I'm going to go ahead and try and approve this. To do that in PDM, it's a simple right-click and pass approval. When I choose past approval, you'll see a warning pop up. That warning is letting me know that, hey, some of these components I'm working on aren't done. In this case, I can see the pump housing is still being changed. It's under changed, which is a simple fix. I'm going to say, OK, yeah, I'm actually done with all of that. We'll go find that pump housing. We're going to say, oh, this is actually being done. This is done being designed. Let's go ahead and approve the change of the part. It's going to take it from under change back into the uh, approved part, approved status. Now when I come back into the drawing and I tell it to pass approval, you'll see that warning goes away, and now I can take my drawing and approve it for production and let my guys start making it. Another way we can leverage that same functionality is actually during the development of the design process. So in this case, I have a user that created an assembly. They're going to try and say, oh, this assembly's done. I'm going to pass it. You're going to see, would they get a, a warning, an error? All right, let's go check and see what the problem is. The problem is, is they actually use the part that's in the obsolete state. 
That's a part that we no longer make, we can no longer buy, and so they actually use the wrong part in the assembly. And since we're tracking that history inside PDM, it's catching that before we ever go cut parts or order things. It actually caught that before we approve this drawing. So we're giving you more tools to streamline that process of approving CAD, or for that case, any kind of data. Now the last thing that I want to show you is some of the enhancements in the Web2 interface. The first thing that you're going to see is you're going to see me logging in at web. What the web is, is I'm actually hosting my vault as a web interface, and I'm giving access to people outside my network. So they essentially go to a website, and they can see information. What you're going to notice in the 2020 Web2 interface is you're going to see a much cleaner, tighter preview. And along with that, you're going to also see history, where before you couldn't see a history of a file when accessing it via the web, nor could you see the bill of materials. So now they're getting more of that engineering data to consume and to see. The last thing that we're going to do is we need to download all this. When I download something from the Web2 interface, you're going to notice that we have access to the drawing, simulation results, and we can even preserve the relative paths, so that way it keeps all that same folder structure in my downloaded section. Now, with all that said, you're like, Roland, I would love to use PDM. Standard, PDM Pro, maybe you want to use SOLIDWORKS Manage, and you're like, I just don't know anything about servers. So the last thing I want to introduce to you guys is actually one of the products that MLC is offering directly, and it's called server hosting. So what is server hosting? It's us providing you a server that's dedicated to you without you having to do any of the legwork. It's a, it's a cloud-based solution, but it is your physical server. We're just hosting it for you. What does that mean for you? That means you could put any server component on that server. It's yours. You essentially own it. You could put PDM. You could put Manage, you could put SOLIDWORKS Electrical for some of you Sparkies out there, like my man Jeremy Browning over there. You could put SQL Server, you could put your toolbox, you can put your license manager, you can put just a network folder. It's your server, you can put anything you want on it. What's the benefit of using a hosted server? Is we manage it for you. So we offload that, that responsibility of actually managing the server, doing backups, doing the operating system, upgrading the licensing, all of that, it's done by us which we do this on a daily basis. It's not that it's rocket science, but if you're not doing it all the time, sometimes you just don't know what you don't know. So you can let the experts do it for you. What's the key? Is we want to make sure that you guys are focused on what you need to be doing, right? Designing and engineering and creating product and not being frustrated with maintaining a server. Or my favorite comment when I run into customers is, hey, have you upgraded? No, I'm waiting on IT to upgrade the server. You'd be surprised. If I had a dollar for every time somebody told me that, I might be able to quit my job. So with that said, you can just choose when you want, and we would be doing all that action for you.